Hi everyone. Welcome to the inaugural episode of Kiddo Book Babble. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to chat about books with me. I'm Lena and today we're going to be talking about picture books with no words. And you'd think these, these would be a little easier to find, but they're actually quite difficult. I've had a really hard time um, finding books that just show the story through the picture and nothing else. Um, I'm going to talk about four of them with you here today. The first one is called Tuesday by David Wisner, and this was published in about 1991. So we're going back a few years. That's how hard it is to find this kind of thing. Um, this book is great. I love it. It's about frogs who start flying around getting into crazy shenanigans. You can see that there's a lot of the illustrations are very lush, very detailed, and there's some action panels to kind of keep showing the action and showing what's going on as these frogs fly all around and have the time of their lives. Um, it, what I like about this is just like great books for adults, it doesn't spell everything out for you. Um, and that makes it a lot more interesting. That makes it more interesting for kids. It makes it more interesting for the adults. So this is a great book to just kind of sit down with your kid and just go through and talk and laugh. It's very funny. My kids got a big kick out of it. They like the confused adults who didn't know what was going on. Um, the only words in this book tell the time and the date. So, and that's actually an added bonus to this is if you're trying to teach your kids how to tell time, um, there's little kind of clues throughout the story that help you along with that. Next up is a book called Mirror by Jeannie Baker. And this is actually two stories in one. These are the only words you'll see, and you can see half of them are in English and half are in Arabic, because this is a story that takes place, um, two stories, one takes place in Australia and the other takes place in Morocco. And the, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Um, if you look closely, you can kind of see uh, the pictures here are done with lots of fabric cutouts and you just you just want to touch everything. It's very neat, very cool to look at. Um, and it continues that way all throughout the Australian side and all throughout the Moroccan side as well. Pretty. Um, but you can also see that it's unwieldy. It's unwieldy and it's kind of difficult to look at if you're trying to read it with your kids. You need a big space to spread everything about. Because as a story, um, it's, you know, not super compelling. What makes it interesting is you're kind of comparing and contrasting um, this boy's day in Australia and the other boy's day in Morocco. And it does resist the urge to make it all too parallel, which is nice. But, um, you know, as a standalone story, you know, like, eh, whatever. So what makes this one interesting is the juxtaposition, but it's also what makes it kind of annoying. So, you know, check that out if you're so interested. Um, the next book I'm going to talk about is called The Conductor by Letitia DeVernay. I have to keep cutting the recording because my animals are making a lot of noise. This is real people. This story is about a conductor who climbs to the top of a very, very tall tree and then starts to conduct. And then the trees start to come apart and turn into birds or something and fly around. And that's pretty much all that happens. There's lots of pages that look like this. And I don't really know how many pages you need that look like this. I mean, there's, there's a lot of them. It's pretty much the whole darn book looks like this. And, you know, okay, fine. Ooh, there's a blank version. Not a lot happening there. Uh, and towards the end, the last four pages, something actually does happen. And it's nice, but I think this whole story could be a good, I don't know, 20 pages shorter. And it would be just as compelling, if not more so. Um, it's also very tall. Very tall. It's hard to get it all in the frame here. Um, so it's another kind of strange choice. I can see what they were going for, but, hmm, you know, it's all right. And the last book I'm going to talk about is my gold standard. It is The Lion and the Mouse by Jerry Pinkney. This one is my favorite, and it's one of my kids' most favorite and most requested bedtime stories. Um, it's a fable. It's a fable um, of a lion who learns that what comes around goes around, but has a nice positive spin on that. In his case, he did something nice, and it comes back to help him. 
Let's see. I mean, look at these. Look at these illustrations. They're beautiful. Um, Jerry Pinkney is a very well-deserved, I think, five-time winner of this medal that you see on the front of the cover here. Um, beautiful story from the mouse's vantage. Very lush. Lot to look at. Um, and what's great about this one too is the story continues all the way through to the back cover and even beyond. This is one of those stories where the dust cover is different than the actual cover and I don't know about you but my kid kind of loves that. I don't know why. She thinks it's an added bonus little secret thing for her to look at. So she loves that. So yes, very highly recommended. I would read this every night and I pretty much do. So okay. Um, so those are the books I was going to talk about today. Um, check in again soon. Please visit the website. It's kiddobookbabble.com. You can ask me questions, send me an email. Um, let me know your favorite books. If you have any wonderful illustrated books with no words that you want to talk about that you would suggest, please let me know. I think it's actually really hard to find these. Um, and yeah, we will see you soon. Thanks.